we need an order? Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazzarelli. Here. Depenia? Here. Graziano? Here. Notari? Here. Rogel? Here. Schumel Burke? Present. Mayor Melham? Here. Sunshine House? Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was published in the December 18th issue of the Star Ledger and the December 20th issue of the Bevel Times. A copy of this notice has been posted on the Bevel Town Hall Bolton Board and a copy which is on file in the municipal clerk's office. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is our first meeting of the new year. Traditionally, we have two meetings a month. Usually we reserve the first meeting of the month for what we used to call a work session. It just changes now. It's basically a conference meeting with the regular scheduled meeting. So what you're going to hear for the next uh, 15, 20, 30 minutes or so is really just the council discussing certain topics that have been on, on the agenda. Unfortunately, at this point, it's really just a conversation amongst us and our professionals. I know there's a lot of new faces here today. You're more than welcome to stay here, and we encourage you to listen to, to the conversation, to the discussion, but really it's, a, it's the ability for you, the public, to hear what we're talking about at this particular meeting. So with that, we have some items on the agenda. Uh, the first item that we have on the agenda here, uh, I placed on the agenda, it is the discussion of department overview committees. This is something that historically every governing body has. This council has had them historically. I sat on them 18 years ago. We never really got around in July when this council first reorganized to be placing different people and different council members on the committees. Uh, to date, I know the police department already has one. There might be a public safety one as well. We have already begun with the work of the manager looking at certain departments, one of which is our IT infrastructure. It is technically a department. We have engaged the services of a third party company to come in and audit our existing IT. I know. Uh, I don't want to step on Council Lavelle's toes, but he's got that item here for an update. We will be getting an update on that. That investigation, or that report, I should say, has been going on for a couple months now. We were told it was going to be ready December 31st. It basically was ready. The last step of that was some interviews, which were completed yesterday. So I expect for the now, next meeting, Councilman, to be able to have that. So it's something that we've always done, something that we want to keep encouraging. Like I said, we never really got around to doing that in uh, July. I'm not really big on just creating committees to create them so we really need them. So I think now it's the time that we're kind of getting our feet here as a governing body and just moving forward to do that. So with that said, does anybody have any input on that? It's, again, something historically we've always done. It's something that I'd like to do and give recommendations. Again, a lot of new faces here, people that are either watching live on the internet or be watching this on, on tape tomorrow. It's in this form of government, uh, this governing body, this form of government, including myself. You know, I meet a lot of people out in the street that think that I run this town, that think that I'm the chief executive officer. I am not. I am merely the guy that sits here holding the gavel during a meeting and uh, discusses things along. I'm an equal voting partner with this council, and really, in this form of government, our township manager. So what we can do is we have the ability through state law and state statute to create a committee uh, based on, our, on ourselves. We want to incorporate some private citizens into that, just like the planning board is and the library board is and the zoning board is, just like that and just be able to review different committees, uh, review different departments, make recommendations. That's all we have the right to do. We can only recommend to the township manager recommendations, and it's his job as the CEO of the town to carry out those wishes. I just wanted to put that caveat out there to anybody who might be new or kind of getting used to this form of government. So that said, uh, I'm okay. Through the, through the chair, sure. Can, can you guys hear me? Wow. So, to me, part of this is th that allows us like, kind of the ability to dialogue with the different departments to be you know, part of and understand what they're doing, what's going on, what they need. Because to me, as, man you know, as part of this whole thing, not quite as managers, but as, as the people trying to help them, our duty is to give them the tools to do their job. So the, the one thing that I, I want to make sure is somewhere like within the next couple of weeks, too, we have another meeting to discuss like what what committees people want to be on, what committees they should be on. Because there's certain ones that, you know, in my case, probably I shouldn't be on the police committee. Right. Um, you know, certain things like that that we should opt out for. And we've had informal conversations. I know that I've deferred to both Council uh, 
Graziano and even yourself at times with some of the IT infrastructure right. because that's your expertise. I know that uh, Councilwoman DePena has had some say with our REC program uh, through, again, the manager. I know Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Natari has made some recommendations. And one of the committees that I'd like to see, again, the reason why I didn't do this in, in July is because we had certain committees that were standing, and traditionally they're just replaced with names. Right. I really wanted to feel out, I don't think we ever had an IT one before, so I wanted to feel out what we needed, and I think we need that one, so we're going to do that one. I'd like, and again, we're not doing it today, but maybe for next meeting, uh, a specific committee, not necessarily departmental related, because that would be recreation, but I think we should have a committee of people that recommend non-recreation activities for our rec department. Like, we now have the drama program, thanks to Deputy Mayor, and we now have arts and crafts, and I know the council, woman De Pena, wants to be more involved in the rec program. So, just things like that. I mean, we didn't know what we needed until we kind of found our way. Well, I, think, I think that's one of the big issues. I mean, we had an IT committee, but it, it didn't go as far as getting an audit done, which was part of the challenge that we had. And the audit really helps us identify where the issues are. Plus it documents what we have going on and what we don't have. Right. I mean, I, I could speak all night about my frustration with certain technology that we're dealing with here. I, I, I totally agree with you, Councilman. Okay. We come from different parts in our job, in our current work environment we're at today, and we bring different things to the table to share amongst us and also institutions. And again, ultimately, he has a say, but again, you hear from different angles. I think it's a great idea. Sure. Uh, Mayor, how are people, uh, the citizens, how are they chosen for this committee? I mean, if some of them have interest in something. They're going to be recommended just, through us. Recommended. Yes. Yeah. So send uh, something in, a letter. Or sure. That. I mean, people that you know, people that out. reach out to you, people you communicate with. That would be, I think, the best way to do it. They would really come from us. Yeah, so I think maybe we should give them some time before we just start appointing people like that. Right? Yeah, I have, I have no interest. In, I'm going to hope to submit something. I'm going to hope to make the first appointments to the first real committees next week. Today we're just looking to establish. But Mayor, if I, if, I, if I might just add something uh, as a follow-up to Deputy Mayor's uh, question. Uh, you, you see there, there's, uh, there's a listing on the agenda. Uh, that's one way, but what, what has occurred after this, having discussion with various members all right, and, and our, our, our attorney, uh, the, the resolution is much more generic and much more inclusive. All right, so it includes all the departments in the entire township, uh, which we feel just makes it a, a better resolution. All right, and uh, it's again, as the mayor said, the selection of, of the people, whether it's the public or the Serving, um, you will decide amongst yourselves who will serve on what committees. If the resolution, just so you know, just has up to three citizens. You don't have to you make it to determine that yeah, a particular not. department doesn't need to have citizens. Um, um, citizens uh, departments that don't necessarily have, have direct contact with citizens, you may not, for instance, the law department. If you, Operate, you don't need operational security. You, you don't need citizens on the committee to review the law department, the law department has been in contact with our actual citizens sure. versus, say, the health department where they're constantly having contact with the citizens right. or the building department which constantly has. So you'll you'll determine, um, all this resolution does is allow you to create form the committee and decide on on how you make, make up the committee. Uh, it talks about a maximum of three citizens but doesn't have to have citizens. Uh, and a maximum of three members, obviously, of, of your body. Can we, uh, all of these committees that we're going to vote on for each department, when uh, you, you talked about the resolution, as how all of these committees, uh, I don't see it on tonight. It's not tonight. We, I, I had this conversation with the town attorney. The We do have an updated resolution that includes all the departments now. Right. Which is, that's we'll be voting on today just to create. So we're not appointing today, but we're just going to establish. No, I think we're just going to amend. I don't know, Steve. Uh, do we amend? Martino, are we going to amend the current resolution? Yeah, I mean, the, the resolution to the original resolution was a particular department. All we did was change it to make it, uh, make it more, all, all, okay. more inclusive of all the departments and less specific in terms of the citizens. Now it just says up to three okay. citizens. Because it's going to be a personal uh, Because it, you, you'll, you'll as, the, as the body of the members of the council, whether it's three council people or the mayor and two council people, 
Uh, we'll establish that. We'll you'll be establish that based on your discussions yeah. as whether or not you want to uh, include citizens or not. Um, look, the statute allows you to do this, allows you to form them yourself. You don't necessarily need resolutions for each committee. This resolution no. covers everything you can do with committees on your own. Trustee will read that later. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And I, I think this, this, this allows for greater governance. <coughs> participation and input, and it's more of a team approach, all right, to, to accomplishing some of the goals that we want to accomplish. Thank you. So, that, so that's what we have in the Yeah, I have something to say about change. this. <laughs> First of all, I was the chairman of the Department of Recreation and Cultural Affairs, and no one has told me that when I had a, there was a committee, and I don't know what happened, I don't know how the people got on, and I wasn't told, I wasn't there anymore. So no, there's no, we, we, did, we haven't appointed any committees. Uh, that's what we're that's a board. Create. That's more of a board that you're talking about, I think, though. The recreation yeah, and cultural No one was told that they, they were not, you know, going to be there. I mean, I, I really think they should be told they're not going to be on this committee who's, anymore. Who's the, I don't know. Well, there's, uh, there were term limits. Oh, that was, uh, I think, it's a recreational board. We haven't appointed anybody, so it, I have a list right here of all the standing committees that we never took yeah. action on. And if your term expired, you are a holdover until you replace. So nobody has left. All right. So uh, here you are, right here. So okay. wh which one are we talking about? Well, we're talking about recreation. Recreation, Hold on. recreation and cultural affairs. Recreation Advisory. and cultural affairs. Okay. Advisory. We have Mr. Garaleman is on there. Carlos Marzan. Marzan. Right. Mr. Strumolo is on there. Mr. Yeah. Paul. Her term has expired, but since she hasn't been a replacement, she's a she's a holdover. Mr. Graziano is actually on that one. His term has expired, but he's still a holdover. Mr. Sabella, Mr. Caruso, Tina Colon, and we have Marie Strumlow Burke, whose term has expired, but you're a holdover, so you're, you're still there. We haven't, but that's, we're talking about two different things, though, uh, Councilman. Yeah, that's, so. that's a committee. Anybody else on that? Mr. Lenny it's, it's 11 that we're going to pull and amend. Yes. Amend. Basically yeah. amend it or? Yeah, we're going to pull it off and then we're going to amend it. Actually, amending it that way, I believe that nobody has a conflict because there's every department is in there. Okay, so I don't want to take too much time on that. We're going to have this conversation and start pointing. So the next item that I had is number two, which is community service. Uh, this conversation has, the uh, reason why this came up is, is pretty simple and I think really practical. I've had a conversation with our presiding judge who said that a lot of times she wants to uh, impose a penalty that's either non-monetary, uh, and we have no community, it basically what it boils down to, we have no community service program here in Bell. Right. If, she, if she submits somebody to community service, it goes down to the county, what used to be called the SLAP program, now it's a different name. But we have no way of knowing that they're going to land back here in Belleville for the community service. So if we institute our own community service program <coughs> under the direction of either uh, DPW or a police officer, or however that works, we would have the ability to, where she, the judges, would have the ability to assign them to Bell. And I think Mr. Tucci has a, an update on that. Yes, I had, a, I had a good conversation with the judge, and she's been in contact with Mr. Restato, who's the county uh, court administrator, and they are working through what the particulars are to set that program up so folks can be assigned to community service here. Good. Next, I had on here, we had a presentation a couple of meetings ago two different companies, both talking about how they could better market and image the township. I work in about 25 cities, most of them, certainly the ones that are our population are larger, all have some kind of professionals that can uh, promote the township, whether that's by press releases or promoting our different products and services. For instance, tonight in my mayor's report, we're going to hear that our construction code department for the first time is going to be open late hours tomorrow night. It's we could do a good job putting it on the website and putting it on the web, on the township social media. I can do a good job. The elected officials can share it. But really, to have a press release type that issued to local newspapers, same thing with our arts program, our journal program. It's something that I would like to see uh, the manager go out for RFPs. We're not awarding anything today. We're not uh, authorizing anything today. We're just simply wondering uh, if we can get the manager to just issue a request for proposal so we can receive different proposals to see where we want to go on that. Every other town that I deal with, especially ones that are our size, does that. And that would be something that I would like to see. The next item, any questions, comments? So we, we just want to go out for our... Yeah, that's it. We're not going to act on anything. We're mm -hmm. just going to... And really, we don't... 
the manager doesn't need our permission to go out for RFP. He can do it on his own, but it's nice to have a consensus to count. RFP, RFQ. Whatever you deem. Yeah. Whatever, so, yeah. whatever it is. The next option is an ordinance review committee. That is something if uh, I talked about during the campaign, uh, a lot about there's, you can look at our ordinances and find ordinances for horse stables and everything else you could possibly imagine. The reason why we haven't acted on that sooner, it's something that I wanted to do within the first 100 days, uh, really came down to the fact that our ordinance is one on So now as of last week or well, yeah, a couple weeks ago, if you go to our website and you click off it to the ordinances and you go to Code Systems, our vendor, all the ordinances are now, we put 15 years worth of ordinances up. And I just want to commend the council for, for making sure that happened because for years you would go to the ordinances and they were grossly outdated. We are now updated as of December 2017 and in 18 we did budget for systematic updates, maybe quarterly or to get the data. So at least we're there. So now I'd like to do something, maybe next meeting when we discuss in the department committees, we can discuss something for an orange review committee. Obviously I want everybody's input. Anybody wants to sit on it, can certainly be in on it. Questions, concerns, complaints, issues? No? Next one, I'm just trying to move quick because I know we have people outside for presentations. The next item is uh, logging and submitting various residence complaints to different departments. We've never had this before, and again, I, I thank the, the council for being supportive of having one uh, staff member, one clerk in this whole building, this whole government at our disposal, which is nice. So we have somebody now that we can bring our complaints to if we get them from residents. And again, just to circle back to my point earlier on this particular form of government, we as admitted, we as policymakers technically should not really be having conversations with department heads or individual employees. Um, to a point, you know, I agree with that, and that, that's that's this form of government. We really can't be giving directives. We can't really be, and between seven elected officials who people out in the real world out there think that we're, we're actually in charge of something, we get a lot of complaints. We control the and It's actually a violation. It, it is a violation. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. So we can dump all those complaints on the manager's office, or for the first time really in the history of, of this government, uh, we collectively decided that we have one person that we can deal with. The question that has been arising since we've been working through that process is that that office, the mayor and council's office, that's upstairs, receives complaints, and then that person is communicating with different departments. And because it's new, we've never done this before. So certain departments want uh, want to hear from the manager. Certain departments want a name or address. So I just want to discuss this out and ask the manager for some direction uh, with heeding to him and, and yielding to his deference as, as the guy who really runs the town, the best way for not just the individual that sits up there in the manager's office, in the, in the office, but even us. We've had some pushback at times from different departments because they just want to make sure we're following proper procedures. And my goal is to service the residents. So I just need some direction to how we can quickly and efficiently do that with with your input, obviously. Well, the, that position is actually an extension of the manager's office. All right, what we need to better do when I would take responsibility for that is work out the logistics, all right, as to how we go about doing that so that when that call does come in from that individual that's serving the mayor of the council, it's as if it's coming from the manager's office. So it's, this is a minor issue. I know there was some pushback, there was some questioning by some of the department heads, again, because it's new and it's different. All right, uh, but we will work it out. It actually provides a lot of relief for my office. All right, so that the individuals in my office are not handling all of these calls. And a lot, and a lot of folks believe, as the mayor has sure come to learn, that uh, the mayor is the titular head of the government, so that all the calls go to the mayor's office. Uh, but we will work out the logistics on that, and I'm, sh I'm sure it'll, it'll be a very smooth transition and introduction. Uh, plus, you have to understand that historically, there's never been, the lights have never been on in that office. So now that there's a body sitting there that represents us, when people walk, a resident walks the building, they come out of a department, they see the lights on, they see a human being is sitting there, they want to be able to get either Council Graziano a message, or they want to be able to 
get something done. And again, it's a learning bit. You know, we're all trying to evolve. We're all trying to move forward here. And you know, one thing I do want to say is we have to acknowledge our our community and our constituent base and our residents. You know, this town, depending on what census you want to look at, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a limb and say that we're at least 50 percent um, an Hispanic population, 50 percent. And when you really understand, and I work in all the big Hudson County towns with a big Cuban population, and I've learned a lot from those mayors, and I've learned a lot from those towns and how they operate, and I've learned a lot about the constituency. I mean, a lot of them are first generation here, and they, whatever country they come from, whether it's Central or South America, they want, uh, have a distrust at times for public officials, and a lot of times they don't necessarily want to call necessarily the police department if they have a question. So they would rather use a buffer like one of us, and we have to be able to represent that person and not be obligated to provide a name and address if it's just a simple complaint. And that, I think, was one of the issues that there was where certain departments here correctly are going by the letter of the law that they need a, a complainant's name. And the reason why they're coming to me or coming to us is because they're not necessarily comfortable or they don't want to do that. So, so until that process is documented and shared, what do you recommend how we move forward as it happens? Because it happens every day. It, ha it happens every day. We get calls every day. And I've already spoken to several of the department heads, and, and they understand that. Uh, what we probably need to do is just have a brief meeting with that at our next department head meeting and have uh, Jeannie's there right now, have Jean come down, and this way I can explain it to them. They can, they can all hear it directly from me. So, so we can push that yes, that way. Yeah, we, right. We okay. can continue to do uh, continue. operating the way we're operating, and I will just make sure that everyone is up to speed. That's uh, is this, and actually, what, what I want to talk about kind of dovetails into that, Mike. That the IT audit's a piece of this whole puzzle, mm -hmm. but we should be looking at I don't know. We we call them customer relationship management systems. Yeah. We have constituency relationship management systems to track this stuff, to get stuff to people, to make sure that we're able <coughs> to have reporting and other things, which I think would be great right. if they can come up with some some ideas for us. I have it. Uh, that's something we do that with. Yeah, I'm convinced through, through the website as a portal, that's something we can do. And we're, we're looking for that, the, the IT, actually the IT audit to come back to us somewhere in the next couple of weeks. Next week or so. Next week's done. Okay. The last final step was three interviews. Now the police chief was interviewed, I was interviewed, uh, employee was interviewed, they wanted three interviews, and that was completed yesterday. Okay. So I'm almost positive that's done. Um, the, um, and yeah, that's, I don't want you to move go, on because I have something else to say about that. Go so, or, go. Yeah, okay. So, that is something that's been incredibly frustrating to me. The fact that we can't, I can't work efficiently. Because again, I'm not here often, you know, I'm here part time. And one, you have to dispel the notion that I am here all the time, and I'm not. And when I am here, it's sometimes very frustrating for me that I can't, you know, I make notes, you know, I have a Surface Pro, and I make notes in my phone or something like that, and I can't get on Wi Fi. If I can get on Wi Fi, I can't email. I can be sitting next to somebody, I have to show them my screen because I can't email it. I can't print it because I have a phone and I have a wireless Surface Pro and we don't have a wireless network printer in this building. I can't email it because the email's down. If I do get the email out, the person receiving it, their email's down. I literally sat in a meeting with an engineer two weeks ago and could not physically get the information. I wound up taking a picture on my phone and using my data to send it to them. I mean, so that's the frustration here. This is a, I keep saying it, this is a $65 million corporation and I can't even share my calendar with anybody that sits upstairs in, in the mayor and council's office because of the, they're using Windows XP and they're using uh, Microsoft Office product, Microsoft Office 2010, that's not compatible with anything in the modern world. So I can't even share a calendar, so I can't schedule ribbon cutting. It's very, very difficult to do. Very difficult. Well, XP was sunset, what, five, ten years ago? I mean, it's, it's a long time ago, so we need to update. There's no doubt about it. The next one there. Uh, just, I, I know we discussed baseball fields, especially the varsity field, mm -hmm. and the status, what we're going to do with it. I just want, next time we get a chance, I'd like an update on where we're at. You know, I mean, we're, got, we're in January. Got, okay. yeah, I, I can give you an update. Okay. Um, what we have already done, we did what they call a deep time aeration, where they come in and they go down about nine inches. All right, They weren't able to penetrate the entire nine inches because of the action on the field. But come springtime, they're going to come back again. They're going to re-aerate, all right? And then at that point, we will be addressing
addressing the lip on the infield to the outfield where you have gullies. So we will be ready for baseball season 2019 and our field will be in good shape. And that was, just so you know, Councilman, that was a, I got onto that when that was a, a complaint that came in through the office and through the person that we collectively had sitting there. And I remember discussing it with the manager and grabbing the engineer and say, we're not going to lose the spring season. Let's do something right now. And when they did that deep end, they could not get down. So there was no drainage. There, no there, there was part of the problem that we weren't allowed to do state. The state didn't want to do you know, events here anymore, which to me, it's, it's a beautiful field. We need, we need to take care of um, My update on, on the road paving. When we get a chance, I'm looking for what we paved in 18, what, what that held over to 19, and then some of the things like the, that everybody here you know, sitting up at the council should know what roads are out there that we need to get done. You know, one of them being Fairview, which we have a poor guy that's in a wheelchair that needs to get around that street. Well, on to your coattails, Councilman. Is, uh, Mr. Tucci, would it be possible for those updates like that for paving to be added to the minutes so we don't have to, you know, not to, not to, not to every, not everything, but certain sure. things that... We know about, and at any time, is that... Uh, Let's get to the management. <coughs> I can include that in the management report. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Harris and I just had a conversation concerning uh, our, our 19 road program and some of the streets that are going to be including that, and he's beginning to prepare uh, bid specifications. So if you have any streets in particular, and I'm not talking about the ones that were holding... Not, not fair to you. The council, not fair to you. Not All fair right, but, but any new we're ones... I do have four shots want to be addressed, just, you know, get that information to my office and we'll have it included. And as opposed to what we've done in years past, because we've tried a couple of times unsuccessfully, all right, we went out to bid early last year, all right, only to be held up by the paving subcontractor, all right. So in this set of contracts and specifications, we're going to put time limits in there, all right. And if they don't produce, you know, the result that we want or the dates that we want, there will in fact be penalties. The, the only problem with that sometimes is if you're going to impose penalties right. for lateness, yeah. you have to give an incentive yeah. for yeah. early. The incentive is we pay them. Yeah. Well, we're going we're to we're we're balance that out. Yeah. Not, I, I, don't, I don't know of any town that's really given a lot of incentives for them completing it early. Yeah. All right, because they, they look, what they like to do is book the jobs as early as they can. So if we're one of the first ones out, hopefully we'll be one of the first I, ones done. I call the service what they're doing, right? It's just that's, 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 yeah. They love to backlog, don't they? Love the I know that in one of the towns that I work in is Roselle, they have our same engineer, they have Mason. And I know when you're in their town hall, they have maps color coded showing the streets that are planned, the streets that are recently done. If we can just get a list, I'm sure we can then transcribe that into something graphically to show sure residents people. what they're doing. So if we can get a list, we can make that happen. Well, what I also spoke to the, to the engineer about is uh, perhaps putting a monitor you know, in town hall so people can see, so we can update, so people can see what the progress is, not only on uh, road paving, but as we begin uh, cleaning and relining of water mains, slip lining of sewer lines, and any other information that can go on there so people can just come in and, and avail themselves to it. And, and, and I think one of the, one of the um, quotes we provided for budget, if it, if it was passed, for the audio-visual piece of it, mm -hmm. was for monitors down there. I'm not yes, you're absolutely right, and we, we, we separated out uh, a portion, all right, of the capital program. We separated out uh, the roads and the water portion. Uh, at the next meeting, I'll be presenting um, the remainder of the capital program, all right, for 2018, which was part of that budget, all right, which includes a senior citizen bus. It includes uh, dollars for upgrading. It includes. We're promising that senior citizen bus. <laughs> Senior Citizen Bus is programmed uh, to the tune of $65,000. All right, there's money in there for building improvements and, and a lot of other things that, for whatever reason, were not was not done in the past. So, with, with the consent of this council, we're moving forward and going into other areas uh, where we need to be. Good, Councilman. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was that really ends the conference portion of what we want to discuss. Does anybody have anything pressing that they want that they can't wait until their committee report? Or is it, something, is it a conversation, Councilman, or no, is it just a report? Just if it's an update, save it for your committee report. You got Council one? Committee? Okay. So 
we're good. We're about 6.30. We're going to move on to part C, which is going to be the presentations. This is something that we just wanted to get done at the beginning of the meeting, so we don't necessarily need to uh, have everybody sitting around here. And I hear some cheerleaders outside, which we'll, we'll call them in a minute. The first presentation, though, that I'm going to make to Matthew Meany, who's attained uh, the great honor of Eagle Scout. So I'm going to call him up. The council uh, prepared a, a proclamation for this for this honor. So it's just something that I want to read. Before I do that, though, I just want to you know this is just not a proclamation for something that made an achievement. If you know anything about Boy Scouts, you know anything about scouting, you know that it's not easy to attain the rank of Eagle, Eagle Scout. I think it's I think it's even in here. I think it's about five percent of Boy Scouts that make it, and four percent. Okay, four uh, percent. And I do see that the shirts that everybody's wearing here, some of his Scout brothers that are in attendance, are Pack 350. As I always try and say this, I'm an alumni of Pack 350, and I know Councilman Cazzarelli. So we are Pack 350. We're not Eagles, though. We're not. We, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the 96%. I'm part of the 96%. <laughs> so with that being said, without further ado, I just want to read this proclamation. It says that whereas the foremost responsibility of an Eagle Scout is to live with honor, be trustworthy, loyal, courageous, cheerful, and of service to others. And whereas the Scout program develops leadership, citizenship, and service to the community through community involvement and by being prepared, and whereas the attainment of the rank of Eagle Scout requires dedication, hard work, loyalty to the principles on which scouting was grounded, whereas Matthew G. Meany has earned the rank of Eagle Scout by the Boy Scouts of America, whereas the confer whereas the conferring of an Eagle Scout is one of the highest awards bestowed upon a Boy Scout. And whereas less than 4% of all Scouts attain this goal. And whereas the achievement carries with it great honor and commitment to continue to develop leadership skills and to serve as a guide and a role model for both community and nation. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Michael Melham, Mayor of the Town of Belleville, presents this, this proclamation to Matthew Meany upon his attainment of Eagle Scout with Troop 350 of the Boy Scouts of America and wish him a bright and successful future. Congratulations.
counsel and defendant will have the honor of awarding the proclamation. So if you girls can come right up, come right through that door. Just here. Just here. Just here. Just here.
10th Annual Halftime Showcase completion and wish success in the years to come. Thank you very much. Separate proclamations for all the ladies. If there's any, somebody we might have left out or a typo or something, feel free to let us I just want um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to the parents. Uh, my daughter did cheering uh, for the first time this year. We went from being very, very hot to then being very, very cold. And I know I uh, commend you as a parent for um, committing to making sure that your children are involved in sports. This is so important because it, it creates in them that pride for Belva, but at the same time, they're learning so many skills and they're coming out, they are cheering for the team, but they're also working as a team. Thank you, parents. You don't get a proclamation, but you do get a thank you from me because I, I really understand. Thank you so very much. And thank you.
continue now that our cheerleaders have dispersed their families. We're going to continue now with the next portion of the, of the meeting, part six, uh, executive session. But we're going to, we have a resolution that we usually vote on the past. The reasons that we're going into executive session, I'd like to specify why we're going to executive session. It is for personnel, contract negotiation updates, as well as litigation. So with that said, as soon as we pass the resolution, we're going to have to ask the, the, the audience to unfortunately vacate the room until we're done. We really don't know how long it's going to take. Um, this one is probably going to be a little while, though. I, 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 would, I would set your expectations that way. So with that said, do we have a uh, resolution to go into executive session? Motion to go into executive session. Clerk, we have a motion to go into executive session. Council Member Cosgrove. And you're absolutely right. Yes. Graziano. Yes. 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 Okay, uh, we'll start with DPW. We had uh, four township properties clean Springer Street, the, uh, the site of the golf course, the parking lot on Brighton Avenue and Bellwood Avenue, uh, Maple Street. We cleaned by the Morris Canal and we cleaned up uh, the wreck house. We placed two clean to leans, one on 51 Parkview Place and one on 24 Hulton Street. Uh, we we uh, repatched uh, 10 large water pitches, which just naturally continue to sink until they reach their level. Uh, we had two large trees removed, one at 35 Grove Street, one at 493 Geraldine Street. And on 1229-18, we had a water main break at 525 Main Street, and we replaced 10 foot of 12 inch water main. Uh, just so for everyone's edification, uh, we will continue Christmas tree pickup until uh, the 25th of January, and leaf bag pickup will continue until the 14th of this month. Um, we also have put out um, for public consumption uh, two flyers, uh, one for our arts and crafts program, uh, which is an eight-week program. The total amount is uh, $40 for the eight weeks or $5 uh, per session. Uh, it'll cover grades K through 1, uh, 2 to 4, and 5 to 6. The tentative start date is February 9th. Uh, we also have a flyer out for our theater workshop program. That's a six-week program with a total cost of $50 or $8 and change uh, per session for grades 3 to 5 <coughs> and 6 to 8. Um, that's all I have for my report. The last piece of information I have this evening is that I'd like to announce that uh, in the spring of this year, I will be vacating the position of township uh, manager. Um, I appreciate all the uh, cooperation and all the help that you gave me in the three years that I've been serving here. Uh, I, I think we've made some uh, some noticeable improvements. We have the Silver Lake Firehouse back on track. Uh, we reconciled all of the township's finances for years 13, 14, and 15, which was not done when I got here in January of 16. Uh, we are in the process of appointing a fire chief. Uh, we're in the process of appointing a CFO. We've consolidated positions. We've reduced uh, salaries. We realized some economies. Uh, we started some new programs, two of which we heard about. We have some senior programs that we started, aerobics and the town-wide garage sale that was recommended by your governing body that we implemented. Uh, we continue to expand our community outreach. We began a study into the infrastructure in, in town uh, which is a precursor to applying for environmental infrastructure trust money, all right, relative to water and sewer improvements, cleaning and relining and slip lining of sewer lines. Um, we, we are in the process of investigating several uh, shared services in a lot of different areas to realize some more economies and, to, and efficiencies, all right. And Town Hall, I think in general, all right, because of your leadership, has become a kinder, gentler place, all right, to do business and to provide services you know, to the people in town. Not in all areas, I saw some chuckles here, <laughs> but in most areas. So we're making progress. Rome wasn't built in a day. 
All right. Again, I'd just like to thank everybody for the opportunity to serve here in Bevel. I'm very happy and very proud to be part of what's going on here and the renaissance that's going on here. And I think Bevel is going through some very positive changes. I think everyone has a, a different style and a different approach to things, but I think you're on the right track. And I just want everyone to know that I'm always available to assist in any transition. I'm not going to be running out the door or whatever it is you feel is necessary. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the report of the mayor. Okay. I have a couple items I just want to discuss. Uh, I'll begin with where you left off, Mr. Hanke. We've known for a little bit of time now of your pending plan. And um, it's something that we discussed here the governing body in private session in December, I believe, when you first intimated that, that potential option. Uh, it's new for us. We, as a governing body, as this governing body, we haven't looked for an admin yet. I think we all have ideas. I can tell you for sure everyone's ideas are going to come into play. <coughs> it's, it's our decision. I've been spending time educating the audience that watches online, that comes here or watches the next day, about this form of government and how this form of government is run. We have very little say in the, in the operations of this government. We're policymakers. I'm one of the seven policymakers <coughs> of the government. And there's only two positions that we directly have a say in. Uh, we hire, this governing body hires two people. We hire the township attorney and we hire the township manager. And those two people literally serve at our pleasure. So at any given time, for any reason, we can remove either one of them and bring in somebody new. That's the only two positions that we have, uh, that we have a set for the most part. So with that being said, the normal co course of action would be, clearly we're going to advertise in uh, New Jersey Legion Municipalities for a manager. I'm assuming Mr. Tucci will help write some, some uh, requirements for that position. It's pretty standard, though. I'm assuming in the next couple of meetings, next meeting or two, uh, you'll see a council committee form. That council committee will probably filter through some of the incoming requests. Traditionally, what happens next is you see a name on agenda and there's a vote. And it's going to be my goal here as a governing body to be a lot more inclusive than past administrations. I've been through a manager change or two. So I'd like to see the process being followed of we advertise, council committee formed by resolution, council committee whittles through. X amount of applicants that come in and then brings everybody in before us. That's never happened before in Belleville. And just to show you how committed we are to that concept, also, which has never happened in the history of Belleville, the reason why our executive session was a little longer today than normal was because we are, Belleville is in need of a new fire chief. Our fire chief is retiring February 1st. In this form of government, that decision is made by the manager. We have top three candidates that did get the opportunity to come before us, and we had the opportunity to ask them some questions. So I plan, uh, as long as the council's okay with it, to do to follow that same method. In this case, though, it will literally be an interview, and it'll literally be our final decision on, on a candidate. Uh, so that would be exactly the approach that I wish. I'm expecting uh, the next person to come in and need some kind of transition help, and uh, I appreciate your, your kind gesture that, that you will always be around for any kind of transition help that we needed. Uh, that said, I already touched on my next item, which is fire chief uh, questions, not interviews, because we don't interview, but we did have the opportunity, the first time in the history of this town, that the governing body actually fielded a couple candidates and had the opportunity to get to know them, understand their job, hear what they plan on for the department, again, the final decision of the fire chief, but that's the reason why we went a little long in the executive session. Dovetailing right into my next comment, uh, there was a, a fire, unfortunately, on Christmas Eve. There always seems to be a Christmas Eve or Christmas tragedy. Uh, thankfully, this one wasn't as tragic as the house was vacant. I was on site for that. Uh, I was on, on, on the scene for that. And I have to say, it was my first uh, working fire as mayor. I hope I never have to have another one. Thankfully, the house was vacant. But I have to say, uh, truly impressed. And maybe I shouldn't be impressed because we know our fire department does a great job. But to be there, to be on scene, to see the men operate the the equipment and to see how they go through it. I described it in the executive session before us. It was like an orchestra. It was really, really impressive. I hope I never have to see another one, but it truly was impressive to see. You know, we think there's a fire, call goes out, bell rings, people show up, they start throwing water at it. It's not like that. It's far more detailed and far more specific. And, and I just want to commend uh, our fire department. They did a fantastic job. 
truly was impressive to see. You know, we think there's a fire, call goes out, bell rings, people show up, they start throwing water at it. It's not like that. It's far more detailed, far more specific, and, and I just want to commend uh, our fire department. They did a fantastic job. Next item, uh, water filters from the city of Newark for Silver Lake. I was in communication with Councilwoman Burke, who represents Silver Lake, uh, all weekend. I was even on the phone with her yesterday. It was our goal yesterday, and the council was going to join me and assist the city of Newark in handing out water filters. I've made a request numerous times to just give us the filters and let us distribute them all because they're under state mandate to provide the filters to their uh, customers. They have to make at least four or five attempts to, to do that. And as we're sitting here, Councilman Burke, I just got a text message from the administrator of the, the North Water saying that last night was their final attempt to make deliveries. They, are, they have 420 boxes of filters and 1,260 replacement cartridges that will be delivered tomorrow to Town Hall. So, Mr. Manager, can you put DPW on, on notice that we will be receiving them tomorrow, and they're going to give us a list of everybody they have not contacted. I know you need a picture for yourself. I know uh, a couple other people that, that need stuff there, but at least now we can maybe set up in the firehouse one night and put an alert out and let people come and distribute them. I absolutely, council will be involved in that. So that's a good development. We're going to have our hands on that. Uh, tomorrow, <coughs> you will notice uh, tomorrow is the first time that our construction code department will be open late hours. Something that we were wanting to do. Our police department is already open late hours on Wednesdays. We do Wednesdays because there's night court here. There's already people in the building. There's security in the building. There's bodies in the building. <coughs> so every single Wednesday, our record department is open late until about 6 o'clock. I know it's not that late, but it's later than 4. Tomorrow is the first time that our construction code department will be open until 6. They will be open every other Wednesday to match the court late nights. Uh, again, you can process uh, permits. You could, they, they'll do intake. They'll, they'll receive permits. Uh, there may or may not be inspectors on hand to answer technical questions, but at least somebody that works late uh, can have the ability to get some of that stuff accomplished. And again, we're really working hard to try and make the government town hall more open uh, and accessible to residents in this traditional world of people actually have jobs. So we're, we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to really be promoting that in the next couple days. I don't expect a huge turnout tomorrow since we just found this out yesterday. Uh, but we will be promoting that on social media and, and what have you. Um, our codification has been completed through 2017. Our IT audit is just about complete. We do have a, a crosswalk that just went live on Franklin Avenue. So if anybody knows the crosswalk, or I'm sorry, the location in front of the chandelier on Franklin Avenue, We've had a couple deaths there. We've had two people, two fatalities that I'm aware of trying to cross that street from the parking lot. So we worked very hard with our current road program to fund that. Uh, we did make some requests to other agencies, county and such, even though it was a county road. It really came time that this council acted and we took money out of our road improvement project to get that done. So we will be having a groundbreaking or a ribbon cutting on that. A DOT update, I know I get a lot of questions about Washington Avenue. They've told us it's a 2021 project. They've told us that is their street. They've told us they want our cooperation with that. We don't have that much of a set. Washington Avenue is a state highway. It's not our street. That said, I've been diligent and, and being a squeaky wheel with them. Uh, myself, I believe the manager will be in on a meeting next week, January 15th at 1030, with those representatives to give us an update on what they're... We met with them about four months ago, and we gave them some feedback. It wasn't kind. We told them what we wanted and what we wanted to see. They basically said it's our street. We can do what we want, but we welcome your input. January 15th, we hear what the outcome of that input is going to be. Just to wrap up, lastly, today I had the opportunity to walk North Reservoir again. It's our third time on site. It was with an engineer, and it was also with North officials. So the uh, city administrator in Newark wanted to be on site for that. Unfortunately, he was in negotiation. He couldn't be there. But Newark Water was on site. Our engineering people met with Newark Water in Little Falls to go over some of the plans and see what's underground there. Uh, we're dealing with some other, I'll call it government agencies, to get permission and find out still the feasibility of whether or not we can even do this. So that continues to be a top priority. Lastly, the Soho Hospital. An update today. There's a crew of 30 people in that building, I'm told, every day. They do want to schedule, uh, they've offered, uh, given me the consideration of a potential walkthrough there. They're saying they're four, four to five months away from a couple hundred what they call luxury apartments being there. Uh, that's the property in front of the Great Lawn. Uh, so that's 
it. I'm going to ask quickly for some council committee reports. <coughs> Councilman Ravel. We already did it. Already did it. Councilman. Councilwoman. Nothing. Councilman. Yes, uh, just like to share with everybody a uh, committee report for uh, the hockey program that we introduced a few months ago uh, to let everybody know that as of Monday, after talking to uh, Mr. Augusta, that we had 30 children signed up for it. So, out of 50 uh, applicants that we can take, 30 are there. And there's still opportunity. I'm sorry? It's a closed or there's still opportunity? No, that, opportunity. there's still opportunity. Wow. Cool. Okay. There's still 20 slots, right? Yeah. I did, uh, yeah, I saw some social media on that. Yeah. So, Councilwoman? We, we were at, the councilman and I, many other council were at the recent ribbon cutting for the new firehouse. Yes. And I'll let something that top priority for you. Deputy Mayor? Yeah, just real fast, because Marlon did touch upon it, the theater workshop it is starting, I don't think you gave the dates, <clears throat> January 23rd mm -hmm. until February 27th. It's going to be at the new friendly house. The flyer is out. I think they're going to um, send it to all the schools. Is that correct? It's also on our website. And I think you also told me tonight there are our, so far we have some kids that are <coughs> interested and that have signed up. So it's a six week program. So it's a good start. Where is it? The new friendly house. We're using the friendly house. <laughs> Anybody? No? Okay, we're on to, no, sorry, communications. Any letter of resignation received from Vincent Cazzarelli as a class three member of the planning board. And then we have to do for that, we have to accept it, or? Yes, you have to accept it. We have a motion, we have a motion, to motion and a second. second. We have a motion and second to accept clerk roll roll. Council member Cazzarelli. Yes. DePena? Yes. Ragnano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Schumelenberg? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance, ordinance number one for public hearing, an ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the Township of Belleville, Chapter Section 1.25, Illegal Turning of Water. Motion open for public hearing. Second. Motion made and second. Clerk Hall. Council Member Cosarelli. Yes. Tanya? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Schumelberg? Yes. yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Motion to close public and move for final adoption. Second. Okay. Motion made second. Clerk for roll. Council Member Cazzarelli. Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Schumacher? Yes. Mayor Mailman? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Ordinance number two for public hearing. An ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances in the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8, Section 3, limiting the use of streets to certain class of vehicles. Motion open for public hearing. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazzarelli? Yes. DePena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Jumelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Motion to close public and move for final adoption. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazzarelli? Yes. DePena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Jumelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Orders is adopted. <coughs> it's number three for public hearing. Bond orders providing for various capital improvements and by the Township of Delve in the County of Essex, New Jersey, appropriating $1,887,180, therefore authorizing the issuance of $665,949. Bonds and notes of the Township to finance the cost thereof. Motion open for public hearing. Second. Motion maintained. Clerk for roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Dependian? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Tim Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Mr. Frantantone? Well, yes, Mayor Council. This is a little different than the, your average uh, bond. Uh, normally we put 5% down. Uh, this one here, we're issuing $1.8 million bond but only financing $665,000 in bonds and notes. Can you explain that? What, first of all, what, what are the capital improvements? These are, uh, these are street improvements, Ben, reconstruction of, uh, basically these are CDBG projects and DOT projects. All right, these do not require a 5% down payment uh, because they're state and, and county funded. Uh, so you, you see in here the, uh, uh, the amount, the soft costs uh, of twenty-six thousand, all right, are just basically for some some filing fees, all right. Uh, so well, that's why reimbursed for the grant for this one. 
Yes. Are these eligible products? Yes, these are all these are all these all are all uh, reimbursable. Yes. What are the roads? Uh, we have. Let's see. I have a bunch of them. We have Smith Street and Union Terrace, the reconstruction of uh, Center Street, Major Jerolman. Uh We have improvements to uh, uh, Smith Union, hold on, uh, and various other streets that um, from the DOT that Mr. Heritz has included. <coughs> it is not attached to this, but I can tell you uh, what those streets are. They're all state approved uh, projects. Yes. Will we? Do this expeditiously so we get it paid in nice hot summertime weather and not when it's 30 degrees Funny outside. Funny you should bring that we'll up. Just discuss that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we already spoke about this. Mr. Harris is in the process of putting uh, the bid specifications together. All right, we're going to be putting timelines, all right, in there and also penalties. And uh, the mayor had mentioned some of the council folks uh, about incentives if they perform. Uh, before the scheduled dates in the uh, in the specification. Well, it's funny I bring it up. I bring it up for 20, 25 years, and I get the same answer. So I miss 22 but then we want. Well, I got you. And, I'm and with you, man. And there's other towns that has a contract. We no, did, it's, uh, it's Mr. Nice Mr. Manager. We did go out very early in, in February. Yes. It just was the contractors that were right. Because sub, it was the paid subcontractor. Yes, yes, we did. Well, that I held us up. I hope you put some good clause in the contract to hold that we're 80, 90 degrees, you get your best street. Well, I can't control the temperature, but yes, I, I, I totally agree with you on, on the time of the year, yes. And yeah. the other thing, can we make sure the check trucks, the lines, the check the trucks lines. that apply the tack coating, mm -hmm. the jets are working, they got 100 jets and four or five of them are spouting, and we're not, we Stephen Street, I oh, had to uh, make uh, a complaint yeah. on it a couple of months ago. So, thank you for that one. Thank you. We'll see. <laughs> well, we'll see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Motion to close public and move for final adoption. Second. Second. Motion to maintain. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. DePena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jumilo Burke? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Ordinance is approved. Ordinance number four for public hearing. Uh, excuse me, but if I might interrupt, all right, because I think this is important because we've been talking about this for a long time. Also included in this bond ordinance, is the acquisition of a senior citizen bus in the amount of seventy-five thousand dollars? I know we're looking for that. It's on the senior citizen. Sorry, to in, which, in three or four. I'm sorry, one. No, in which? No, which one? The one we just did. Uh, the one we just did. Three. Three. Uh, did we read? Did we read? I'm going to read it right now. Bond yeah. ordinance providing for various improvements to the board utility in and by the town of Belvin, the county of Essex, New Jersey, appropriating. $550,000, therefore, authorizing the issuance of $550,000. Bound to note to the township to finance the cost thereof. Motion open public hearing. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Depenia. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Notari. Yes. Robel. Yes. Trina Lober. Yes. Mayor Melner. Yes. yes. Mr. Frantanto. Again, is this uh, on the cleaning room line? Are the water mains on that one? Said the water utility? Uh, it could include, this does not uh, particularly address uh, cleaning and relining. That'll be in the 19 budget. This is for uh, improvements that were made in the 18 budget uh, to water mains that were replaced in the housing things of that nature. Is this 550000 our money or grants or loan? This is our money. $550,000 soft cost. Motion to close public. No. Uh, move for final adoption. Motion to maintain. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Calzarelli. Yes. Catania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Trimble Oper? Yes. Mayor Melham? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Ordinance number five for public hearing and ordinance authorizing the township of Belleville to vacate township owned property known as a portion of Cleveland Street adjacent to lot 30, 34, block 8503, not needed for public use and authorizing sale of same by private sale pursuant to MJSA 40A calling 12-13B5. Motion open for public hearing. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Catania? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Burke? <coughs> yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Motion to close and move for final adoption. Second. Okay. 
Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosmell? Yes. Virginia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Yatari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Trimelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Ordinance is approved. Ordinance number six for public hearing and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances in the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8-6A stop sign inter intersection designated. Motion for public hearing. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jim Lopert? Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. Motion to close public and move for final adoption. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jim Lopert? Yes. Mayor Melvin? Yes. Ordinance is approved. Ordinance number seven. For public hearing and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances in the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8-2.9, parking time limited on certain streets. Motion open for public hearing. Second. second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notori? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Strumel Burke? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Motion to close and move for final adoption. Second. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazarelli? Yes. Stipendia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strumelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Ordinance is approved. Ordinance number eight for public hearing and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances of the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8-2.2, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets. Motion open for public hearing. Second. Check. Motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Dependia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Notari? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jumelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Motion to close public and move to the final vote. Oh, Fire then. Mr. Fantantano. Yeah, is this cross street in front of Walgreens? Well, I read the lot in Boston, I'm going to look to it. I read the description, 77 feet from Market Street. And then 56 feet. I, I just have Washington at Rutgers. Well, your or the written words in the ordinance say from the uh, south west apex yes. of Rutgers Street and 77 yes. feet. What, what I'm trying to ask you is, uh, I didn't like it when they approved that project. I, I like the project. The problem is they wanted to eliminate, I think, eight parking meters there. We've got a severe problem on, on Washington Avenue. How many, par I understand they've got to take some away for the driveway. How many parking space are we going to lose with this order? I'm not aware of that answer. Well, you guys are going to vote on it. I think you should know what you're voting on. It's critical. You know the parking problem we've got down there. I, I lose customers all the time. so. If it's when they went before the board, they, I think they wanted to eliminate eight parking space. I didn't understand why because it doesn't say that we're eliminating any parking spots. Well, if you read it, it, it says you start from that apex on Rutgers Street and Washington Avenue. Mm -hmm. The southwest corner. So that means That's this corner where the old Mel's photo used to be. Uh -huh. right. Then it says you go in 77 feet and start at that point, and you go south. I think it's either 56 or 57 feet. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you're beginning at the point 77. You're not going 77 feet. Right. It starts at 77 feet right. from Rutgers Street. The problem is, 57 feet looks like about three parking spaces. If you're talking about, the point, about 20 feet, is what it looks like to me. If you're talking, so usually 20 feet, feet, feet for a parking. If it's 20 feet, one one car on the street would be a 20 foot parking spot. Well, they, they allow 19 feet, so 57 is three parking spaces. But they had asked for about eight. So I want to make no, I, I, that's not. Right. I mean, like I'm saying this wrong, Ben. It's from a point seventy-seven feet south to a point fifty-seven. So it's only twenty feet. No, no, it's fifty-seven. It starts at seventy-seven feet south of the corner. Right. So right. Feet. And then continuing to a point from that point, fifty-seven feet. Fifty-seven. 
Gotcha. It's two spaces. Gotcha. So that's the equivalent about yeah. three parking spaces. I can understand. But I just want to make sure we don't lose more than three parking spaces. Yeah. Which we desperately yeah. need that. Because you have to have the clearance for yeah. the. For the I mean, this is in, in conjunction or in accordance with their site plan approval from the planning board. So whatever their plan that was approved, the, we have to match that. So whatever it was there, I wasn't. Well, That's why I'm concerned because at the, I was at that site plan and they wanted a lot more. And I, I couldn't understand why they wanted eight parking spaces, yeah. uh, eight meters removed. Yeah. We can get you an answer on that. Well, I, before you approve it, I hope you know what you're approving. If it's three spaces for a, for a driveway, no problem. But if it's more than that, you people better not. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming we're, we're doing it in conjunction with their site plan approval. <laughs> I mean, we don't well, have a say in that. You know. <laughs> The cliche about assume, right? So, uh, if it's, but if we pass it today, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not, not a with that, it's not going to. It's not legal. It's right. the police. Yeah, I know. It's, it's always the easier it's to hold off and do it properly than to try to go back. Well, see, that's it. different, Ben. I assume that we are doing it properly. You assume we're not doing it properly. <laughs> so I assume we're doing it properly, and if it's wrong, we'll change it. Well, because I'm here tonight, I was also at the. Uh, the board meeting when they got the approval for it. I know what they asked for, it, and that's really got me concerned. You know? Okay, but that your your you voiced that objection at the planning board. Here we're just executing with the final decision was the planning board. I but you have the authority <coughs> to do the final decision. Right. So if, if they wanted another four or five spaces just for exposure to their store, well, that shouldn't be allowed the by the governing body. You have the power to not allow that. So it's 57 feet. It's 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 2.7 two space. spaces. So it's three spaces. If it's not three spaces, I give you my word. We'll reconsider. How about that? Okay. So if it's more than three. You're not going to allow it. No, if it's more than three, we will bring it back up here for a vote. Okay. Okay. Motion to close public. You got my word on that. Motion made. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. Catania. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Centauri. Yes. Robel. Yes. Strumelo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melham. Yes. The ordinance is adopted. Motion for public comments. Motion to move for public comments. Second. We have a motion made and second to open up for public comments. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cazarelli. Yes. Depenia. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Notari. Yes. Robel. Yes. Strumelo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melham. Yes. I want to know what happened to the bike patrols. They're not out there no more. It's not that cold out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it's the right bikes and the adults can ride it. They can have it up. They can have it up. You 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 can I'd like to give each one of them to the governing body. I will get down to see the tax assessor. I have until August. And I'll give you another one Thank on so illegal apartments. It may be sooner than August. Uh, well, we'll see. And I want to see. For illegal apartments, something has to go in there. My block is so bad with illegal apartments, you cannot park. It's horrible. And it's not only on my block, it's all around. And when they go in and they catch them with the illegal apartment, all right, they get the people out of there. A month later, they're right back in there. There's not like a double check to make sure they're not back in there. Something's got to be done because it's putting a strain on the school system because they're not paying the taxes they should be paying and all that. Something has to be done. It has to stop. Thank you. Uh, Victor Mifuchi, 61 Continental. Uh, just two quick things. I want to thank you for the crosswalk up by the chandelier. I've lived on Continental since 1947, so I'm quite aware of the problems. This is about a young man. Uh, also, you had sent to the planning board for block 10,001, lot 3, down uh, Main Street, 15 plus acres. Uh, see if it's an area of need of redevelopment. I'm not questioning that. I was curious why lot two wasn't included 
course, that whole block is only 6,346 square feet, and it's adjacent to the other property. It's between that property and the power lines. And I don't understand how you could do 15 acres and then not do 14.5 uh, acres. I'm sorry, what was the size of the second lot? I'm sorry. 14.5 acres. <coughs> no, you said it's only 6 acres. I'm sorry, 14.5 percent. Oh, percent. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You have to go for a minute. Um, I, mean, I, I, I don't know. Like, honestly, I don't know the answer to it. I'm not sure if it's the same track. I'm not sure if it's also in the same condition as the other lot is. I, that I don't know yet. Well, I'll, well, I'll find out. I'll ask. The only thing with that is they were before the planning board. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. And it was commented there that the front of the building, between the building and the street, always looks like a junkyard with all the stuff that have piled up out there. So if nothing's going to be done there, at least get after them to keep. Mm -hmm. in, you can't even see the front of the building half the time. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Through the chair. You're right. very welcome about the crosswalk, by the way. The, um, on the corner there of Continental and Celia there, yeah. the, I guess the sewer of yeah. sunk. Is that? I wrote that. I know. Yeah, I know. We're, I know we have. I know we have a barrier there. But in the in the spring, can we get somebody out there or something? Are we going to do that? I guess. Just they put one sure. of those blockades. So I go past there every day. So I'm like, what can I see? Because uh, cars kept going over it. Got it. Sir. Yes. My name is Michael Little. Um, you've been touching on the subject of pedestrian crosswalks. I was not aware of those situations, but I have been aware of a situation with it crosswalk on Union Avenue at the intersection with Overlook, uh -huh. connecting the Megaro Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. um, I had attempted, there was a problem that the crosswalk is not marked clearly. People park right on the crosswalk or right adjacent to the crosswalk because the, there is no marking on the curb to show that this is no parking. Common sense would tell people you do not park on the crosswalk. Sure. They need to have it explained to them. That's number one. Number two, because people parking on the crosswalk, pedestrians attempting to cross that crosswalk have to take their life in their hands to cross because the cars coming down cannot see them attempting to cross. I have been in touch with the lady in your office, Ms. Lombardi, and I have and I'm aware of the outcome, actually. I know the police department has already come to you. I know you've talked to a traffic officer already. Yes. I know there's a remediation plan to, to, to fix it. Partly. Okay. I have seen the police presence there. They're not parking on the crosswalk itself, but they're still parking right up against the crosswalk. Okay. I think the law is that you're not allowed to park within 25 feet. I may be wrong. It may be 10 feet, but at least... It's 10 feet or 25 feet. They need to enforce that by painting the curve yellow, which it is not. We, uh, I'm laughing with the matter. We've, we've, because of your situation and because of the level that has reached to conversations inside Town Hall, we've had these conversations. So uh, there's a debate between the powers that be on whether or not we're going to paint Belgian block, or and I'm not sure if there's even Belgian block there, but or we're going to just paint a box out. I'm told that we are going to paint a, a box, which I've well, seen now. Give me a couple of cans of paint and a picture. <laughs> <I'll do it laughs> I'll say but your, your issue is being addressed. We've, I, I'm well, I, I knew the answer before you even finished speaking. So even on, well even on my way down here today, at quarter to six this evening, there were cars parked all the way along, except in that space of the crosswalk, but all adjacent to the crosswalk. Okay. Well, People we'll trying sure. to cross cannot see whether there's cars coming. The cars, the cars see coming see cannot see if there's somebody right. trying to can't cross. Got it. You also need to put a, a bollard in the middle of the roadway. Neighboring communities like mm -hmm. Montclair, Cedar Grove, they have these the signs in yep. the middle of the that says, crosswalk that says traffic. state law mm -hmm. stop for pedestrians in the crosswalk. Okay. That's cool. Thank That's you. That's all I was to say. Thank I, you. I can tell you that in preparing for tonight's meeting, I sat in the manager's office with the police chief, and your name came up, your address came up, that crosswalk came up. So okay. We're well aware. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Barbara Capella, and I'm the president of the Brandywine Condo Association on Double Avenue. And we have a big safety problem in front of our building. Uh, 
For 37 years, we had no parking, and the curb was painted yellow. July, all of a sudden, the fire hydrant disappeared, and the no parking sign disappeared. The Ferrara transmission started parking all his cars from the front of our condo all the way to Willie. He stores the cars there. He does all the county police cars and trucks. Um, cars are parked on our front lawn, down our sidewalk, uh, in front of the street and curb. Now they're also parking the police cars across the street from the Walgreens and the grocery store. I called and complained. I went to Lieutenant Stephen Tarot. He said, it's not a Belleville problem, it's a Bloomfield problem. It's a county road. So he went to Bloomfield and they painted like this much of the yellow curb and put a sign here. I said I wanted the full curb painted yellow and the no parking any time that we had for 37 years. Nothing's happening. Um, he has police cars parked all over the place. The county police are everywhere. People, you can't see when you pull out of our condo left or right because he's got trucks, he's got trailers, he's got flat tire trucks and cars sitting there day and night. Now he's parking them across the street. I called Winfield last week four times between 4 and 7 o'clock. We're too busy. That's not a problem. I said, well, somebody just had an accident. Well, we'll get there when we can. Nobody ever showed up. This is constant. We've got a daycare down the stairs, street from there. We've got a nail salon, a uh, hair salon. There's a, a video store, a music store. You can't, and then the crushing, the center, uh, shopping center, is <coughs> in and out here, in and out here. You can't, I've been almost been hit three times with my car. The seniors can't walk because the, the sidewalk is covered with cars. He even hit a car coming down Belleville Avenue because he couldn't see with all the, the cars and trucks he has. Somebody's going to get killed, and before somebody gets killed, I want the sign put back up, and I want the curb painted. Okay, thank you. So we, we, again, um, like Mr. Little, um, very aware of your situation. I know you've called my office many times. We've been in communication with you many times. Our police department has been involved. I know you don't want to hear this. I, I, I know you don't want to hear this. But you, you I, know, I know you're aware of we've, we've had conversations between my office and yours. Well, I've spoken to it, your secretary, right, Jean, it, who lived there, too, I and agrees with us. It is Bloomfield. No. No, okay, we called Bloomfield the last week. I know, ma'am, but with no, I we called Bloomfield last week and they switched us to Belva. They're like, it's, the it's a county, it's a county shop. road. You, Belva, uh, Franklin Avenue was a county road. The you put that on by Chandelier. The street is Bloomfield. I, I sat in our chief's office when he's called the public safety director for Bloomfield to try and get them to put the sign back, try and get them to paint the curb. I know your, I know Brandy Wine Condos is Belva, and I yeah, know I taxes. wish I could help you, but it it is. It's a Bluefield well, business. We called Bluefield last week. They switched us straight to Belleville Police. I, 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 I'm sure they probably did, but so I sat in our chief's office with. So we have to have somebody with, with killed on Belleville called, Avenue again. Ma'am, if I could put a sign there, I would go put well, the sign there myself. If I could paint it, it's not Belleville property. I know you're frustrated. Well, I pay Belleville taxes to Belleville. You, you I don't do. pay anything to Bluefield. I get nothing from Bluefield. I know, but the transmission shop is Bloomfield, where he's parking his car, where the shopping center is Bloomfield. I wish I, I well, wish we could do more. The county's I, parking their police. I have tons of pictures. They're parking on my lawn, on my it. sidewalk, on the curb. So let's wait for somebody to get killed first. No, Is that what not, you want? Not, no, not at all. I, I, we, if you live there and you can't pull out left or right because you can't see a thing. Understand. We've got kids there. We've got seniors. We've got people. We've got everybody. You got the shopping center coming across. You got traffic. That's Bloomfield, ma'am. The shopping center is Bloomfield. I, I, I well, wish it's a I county could help road. You. I mean, as you heard with Mr. Little, our traffic department has already been there. They've been in contact with him. We we do address well, the situation. Why did they paint the whole side of this? It's not Belleville, ma'am. It is Belleville because I'm paying my taxes. You live Belleville. in Belleville. When I you come out to the street, the left, if you're coming out your drive, I, I've been there, I've seen it. You come out your drive to the left, the, the transmission shop, where he parks his cars in front of his shop, that's Bluefield. Mm -hmm. My crosswalk is in Belleville. Yes. No, no, we so why can't we paint that curb? Yeah. Right. Go ahead, go ahead, sit down. We, 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 we are addressing it. We, so we are just, addressing it. Just through the chair, I mean, the sad thing is the warden had to leave. But a lot of times the county will come here, they have a representative, and maybe the next time he comes here, we should hear the meeting. We, we should we should talk about that. Maybe you can help us out because it, it kind of sits between the two of us right well, now. Well, right? when I it, called Bloomfield about Bloomfield. the county cop parked in front of the Walgreens on the other side with other trucks and cars, 
We're busy. We don't have but the time. Walgreens is From 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock, my call is This is the county rep. We will be at the next meeting. The county rep will be at the next meeting, so maybe maybe that will be the time to address it. Well, the county point. police, he's got, a, he's got a deal with the county yeah. police. He goes over. So when you call that corruption, I call that corruption. Yeah. And I'm not going to wait for somebody in my condo to get killed. Somebody was killed on Belleville Avenue a couple of years ago, but she worked for the county, so they put a no turn on red. I'm not going to let one of my residents get killed, or a visitor, or somebody coming in and out. That's a crime. So you all want to be part of the crime. I think, and have we, I think, we, all, I think we all agree with you, and I, I would say next time, please, if you're really concerned, I am come concerned. to the meeting, I've been fighting come since to the July. meeting, and we'll talk to the county guy. That's, well, that's, 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 at least, at least we're going to give it a shot here. This is just, we can't go into other people's crime. towns and tell them what to do. Well, it's a sin what they're doing. Thank you. What else? This is a side that that is a serious problem for our Bellwood residents living in Bangalore. Two weekends ago, Ferrara parked cars and trucks bumper to bumper across the sidewalk and five feet into the street. My son lived around the corner of Montgomery. I'm sure. So Lord our residents, Bellwood residents, here's our respect <laughs> Bellwood residents. You're only supposed to cross at a crosswalk. <coughs> If those people in Brandywine want a shot, they have to walk up to the crosswalk to cross. But when Ferrara blocks the sidewalk and the street, Ferrara's our residents are affected. Ferrara's in Bluefield. The Bluefield police but have to enforce it. Your job is to protect the well, safety of our citizens. Uh, but I, another little occasion to thank you. I want to thank you for allowing Mr. Tucci to leave politely and gracefully. You're welcome. Unlike when you were on a previous council, if you remember how crudely you fired the town attorney at a public meeting with no advance notice to uh, Mayor Kimball? Do you I remember that, Mayor Kimball? I never fired a town attorney. Your mayor, you were sitting right over there while your mayor said, Mr. Kimball, would you please get up? You're fired. Get out of here. Not the, the poor guy attorney. left crying. Won't, so I thank you for not doing that to Mr. Tucci. I never so thought of Thank you. For, right huh? Thank you. Thank you. This was my you. initiative. You know, you keep saying about you keep saying about the past, how bad it was. You were part of the past, man. Thank you. Uh, and Mr. Tucci, yes, uh, before you leave, yes, will we have a budget on time? We should look at our you goal. said in the we're spring. Already, we're already working. I agree. I said I'm leaving in the spring. I'd say the budget will be done in the spring. The spring we're already working on the March budget. Yet. A couple of departments are already done. We're moving along. <laughs> okay, well, all last year, and since you took off, Mayor, you said the budget is going to be on time. Yep, and every meeting I say, I agree with you. Uh, unfortunately, Belleville was in the news again, and all over the internet, a disgusting lawsuit, you know, the, the characteristics of the lawsuit were really crude. Uh, another $235,000. Dollars or more, according to your statement in the press, you did it, said, I do not believe the amount is an accurate representation of what the township paid out. So maybe it's more than it was $35,000. We won't go into that now. But this was on and on, all these lawsuits, <coughs> and council. I mean, this is going on for years. In this case, if you read the specifics of the case, which were in the news, what about the town employees who created this situation? Are they being disciplined in any way, shape, or form? Did I respond to that? Yeah. What, what he's done was common sense. Okay. Yeah. Because we, the taxpayer, keep uh, going on this here. And when you say, oh, the insurance company paying most of it, yes, but our insurance rate rating goes up. Our, you know, and what happens, our premiums go up because of all the cases that they're paying out. So we are getting, I hate to use the word, I don't like to use the word, but we're getting screwed to taxpayers. This goes on and on and low. on. And the people responsible for these, when you read that book, the, two, the other two employees that created this problem, somebody's got to take care of them. Why are we paying the freight? And they're living high, nice salary, they're going to get a pension, they got health benefits for all, and we're struggling to pay those costs. Um, in regard to the 5K race, at one meeting, Mr. Mayor, you said that you wrote out checks to the Veteran Association, but you didn't know how much was in the account, which I hope you don't do it in your private life, you know, because I don't write checks unless I know. But we just to come to find out, the 5K race, <coughs> at, at least to the total to date, raised over 
hundred dollars. Um, what the money from what we hear from the veterans, uh, they didn't get the thousand. I think at one meeting, we're looking at one of the videos. You said you were giving a thousand dollar scholarship to some no, student or something. No, um, we understand the veterans each got two fifty. That's a thousand dollars. What happened to the other four or five thousand dollars that we raised? Those are your two questions for today? Mm -hmm. Are those your two questions for today? Uh, well, well, the road uh, problem, I brought that up earlier, the other one. And, uh, yeah, one final thing <coughs> is that you, uh, in your statement, in your mayor's statement, you said that you described this form of government, which I think some of us understand, and you said you don't have the power to do anything, and your words were, people think I run this town. All right. There's a reason for that, because you're running all over town, you're going into meetings, the seniors called me, you were over there in one meeting with a town employee taking pictures of you. And then you use those things for publicity. That's campaign. Why do you take a town employee who's listed as an account clerk, take her with you to all these events and have her taking pictures of you to use for campaigning? You know, so when you say you don't do it, and one of the reasons I think you made that statement, because there's been a lot of statements around town, you think you're running the town. You've been trying to do too many things that are Mr. Tucci's job. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably why you make that statement. Thank you. But let's leave it there and up. stop this publicity and stop using town employees to do your campaign photos uh, on, on our expenses. Thank so if I can get some of those answers, I'd like to show uh, I think Mr. Tucci had a comment about the first, the first issue about the lawsuit. About the little, little thing, we're, we're reviewing all those lawsuits. All right, and the one that you're speaking about now, I believe, goes back to 2009. All right, and uh, we will, in fact, be reprimanding those that did not act appropriately and, and cause some of those settlements. Not only that one, but we're reviewing some other lawsuits as well. Uh, with regard to the 5K run, we never said that we were going to give a $1,000 scholarship. We, I know we said we were going to give a scholarship. We did promise the veterans organizations at least the minimum of $250. And that was before all the income was in. So we really didn't know how much money we were going to make. We didn't know how many, how many donations we were going to get. We didn't know how many runners we were going to get. But that was a bare minimum of what I was going to do. You know, I think it's interesting, though, because in years past, nobody, nobody ever gave the veterans anything. So the fact that now we're actually giving the veterans a donation the fact that we no longer pay outside schools seven hundred and fifty dollars to march when guess what they really only wanted two hundred and fifty dollars so that's what we gave the fact that we never ever paid the bevel high school marching band yet we paid other schools seven hundred and fifty dollars changed we actually are giving the school district i think it's three hundred dollars we're just waiting on some to finish the, some of the paperwork scholarship is going out we did give each veterans organization two hundred and fifty dollars you know, Mr. Francantoni, you have to understand there's also expenses, too. You don't just collect money. You know, there's two sides to it. There's an income and, and there's expenses, too. So be, between the rock race, which was the electronic timing, between the T-shirts, between the printing that we had to do, the donations, the future scholarship, uh, all of that totaled somewhere about $4,000. We still have... We had over, there were a lot of police officers there, There's overtime there, we had overtime for DPW, it was a Saturday, those numbers go into the thousands, by the way. So this was not a profit-making venture, this was something to do to honor our veterans, which I think we did, which had never been done before, and we actually gave them all a donation, and then we actually honored them the next day when they marched in the parade. And by the way, they're all very happy with, with the service and what was done for them. That had never been done before. Will it print out of the expenses being made available? I believe there was an open request for that, and I believe it was already processed or it will be processed. Yes. Um, I got two things I want to uh, discuss. Number one, uh, school 10, the parking, when the people are dropping their kids off and picking them off, picking them up, there's no longer double parking. Now you can see triple parking. It's bottlenecking. The uh, area there, when the cars and stuff want to get through, um, maybe you could think about something like you did over the school on Jerolimo Street, cut, a, do a curb cut, and so they could pull in there. It's it just getting really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is, winter's here now. We're going to start with the snow. 
Uh, I brought this up at many other council meetings. Um, fence between the Fairway Park and the Bridge Brick Apartments gets pushed down between the cars backing into it, the trailer, they have a, a, a car trailer chained to it, that backs into it, the, the snow that they push up against the fence, and the dumpsters. If you go up there and look, the fence is atrocious. Every time they keep bending it back, bending it back. So half the poles are hanging down, which could hit somebody that's in the playground playing. Um, I suggested a few years back that you get uh, the Bridgebrook Apartments to put up a guardrail along the fence. This way, when they plow the snow, the guardrail stops it from pushing the fence down. Uh, the fence is, take a look over there and take a look at it, it's a mess. You've got poles sticking all over the place, bent in and out, the fence. So I hope that this council can do something about that. And the first heavy snowfall we have, go up and take a look and see what they're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I've been there. Uh, we've been in contact with Bridgebrook. We've had our engineer already write a letter saying that it was Bridgebrook's snowplow that damaged our fence, because that is our fence, and they are submitting it to their insurance. So that's that. With regard to the school, I sometimes, depending on how I go to work in the morning, I sometimes pass three schools. It could take me a half hour to, to get to work sometimes. I pass sometimes the high school or school seven down to school three. Parking, speeding, cars, just cars in general in this town. It's an epidemic. It's an epidemic everywhere, though. I can't get into my office sometimes because I'll have a car parked in my driveway that's empty because somebody brought their kid to school number three. So, and there's cars double parked, and you said triple parked. I get it. They did something at number seven school that alleviated some of it, but not after I drive through there at school time sometimes. It's not as good. It's, it's, we, we have a, there's a problem with cars in this town, you know, whether it's <coughs> or parking or parking on intersections or parking in front of transmission shops, there's a problem. You know, it, it really stems down to it just got to be, everybody's got two cars now. You know, every household, every driver, and every 17 plus old person in a household's got a car. You know, back in the day, my family had one car. You know, by the time I graduated college and left the house, there were four of us that had four cars. You know, there's just a lot of cars around. Um, we are addressing, I did ask Mr. Tucci and spoke to the police chief about capital. I know your issue wasn't necessarily speeding, but like I said, cars are, are an epidemic. We are, we have the 2019 bombs some temporary speed humps that we can deploy at certain locations. I did have the conversation based on Mr. Little's continued um, questioning about that intersection, about curb cuts and about paintings, and about painting Belgian block curbs and painting box outs. I sent the police chief a text message from North Arlington, who they won't paint Belgian blocks either, but they'll do a, a, a paint out, they call it. They paint the asphalt with an X. We're, we're, we're trying to address as much as we can. We, we really are. It's not something that we're ignoring at all. Okay. Through, through the chair. Gary, I, just a, a quick question for you. We had asked Passaic Valley to take a look at Third River there because there's some trees that came down and some other things. Did they ever... I mean, do you, you know, when you get a chance, let us know. They're supposed to really clean the brook. They did a good job. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Uh, good evening. Michael Sheldon. I'll try to keep my, my remarks and comments uh, brief since we're already closing at 9.30. I uh, want to start off by congratulating Mr. Meany once again for attaining the status of Eagle Scout. Uh, in addition to two council members being alumni, of PAC 350, I'm also a proud alumnus of, of that organization. Uh, a little bit, I served before either of you did, I'm sure. Uh, as the uh, current chair of the Transportation Committee, I would like to make an appeal to the council. Could you please appoint some new members to it? We are functioning right now with only four or five members. We had a meeting Monday night. We had to cancel it because we didn't have a quorum. So if there's anything you guys can do to streamline this, get a few more people in place, Beginning of the year, we have lots of licenses to renew, so time is of the essence. If you can get one or two new people in place before February, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, I don't want to belabor this uh, somewhat embarrassing legal matter that um, Mr. Frantantoni spoke about. Oh, before I get that, let me, I want to address something Mr. Hinton said. He brought up the parking situation uh, by school number 10. The complication there is that school number 10 is situated on two county roads, whereas school number 7, with the curb cut that was on a township road. Uh, I happen to be now the uh, chair of both the uh, Board of Education's uh, uh, 
uh, well, the Building and Grounds Committee, the Operations Committee, and also the Chair of the Finance Committee. So I'm going to make sure during the course of this year the parking situation for all of our public schools is getting some renewed attention. So please try to come to board meetings. We have our next one on Monday. We'll try to do something more during the course of this year to try to make a dent in parking at our schools. Uh, again, not to belabor what Mr. Francitoni spoke about earlier about this uh, unfortunate lawsuit, which is kind of a, another major embarrassment to the township. Uh, one reporter, this story has been picked up nationwide, unfortunately. One reporter said uh, something to the effect that uh, this is, that Belleville is utterly, not utterly, uh, utterly ridiculous. Uh, you know, so lots of uh, puns uh, taken at our, 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 at our expense. But um, Mr. Mel, you uh, gave a comment, or you were quoted in the uh, Belleville Nutley patch. I just want to quickly read this. Mr. Fredertoni gave the first sentence, but I'd like to read the entire. It says, I do not believe the amount is an accurate representation on what the township paid out. The bulk of the payout was paid by our insurance, but the real story here is the number of lawsuits we are settling and being ordered to pay. The number of them and the amounts we are paying is staggering. It's well into the millions. The public has a right to know. Thankfully, those who mismanage this township of years, I forget you meant to say four years, and use their positions of authority to settle personal vendettas are gone. Unfortunately, we are just beginning to clean up the mess they left behind. Stay tuned. So just a couple of things I want to say in response to this. I agree there have been way too many lawsuits, not only directed at the municipality, but also the Board of Education. Very recently, I asked our BA to come up with a list of all the lawsuits the Board has had to deal with in the last 10 years. Anyone want to guess what that number is? No. Well, it's 34. 34 settlements in just the last 10 years. So I'd like to ask you, for the sake of openness and transparency, would you be willing to publish a list of all of the settlements, not only the number, but the amounts that have been incurred by the, the municipality in the last 10 or 15 years? If you're not willing to do that on your own, then I will follow through with an open request. Uh, as you know, and you alluded to this, it's not that the public has a right. There is an absolute right for the public to I know. I have no problem with that. Right. right. That was the famous uh, case of Asbury Park Press versus the County of Monmouth. So the Supreme Court of New Jersey has codified that the public does have the right to see how taxpayer monies are used in these settlements. So if you're not going to do this on your own volition, I'll file the necessary. I just said that. No problem doing it. You will do it. Okay. All right. I've already asked for it. Actually. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, you also um, conclude your remark here by saying that the, the township was mismanaged for years and people have used their positions of authority to settle personal vendettas. Now, I think it's pretty clear who you're, you're referring to in this matter, but you all realize that for your colleagues here on the council, one has been here for the last seven years, the other three have been here for 14 years. I wasn't referring to council people. Oh, you're not, all right, well, it's kind of, when I read between the lines here, it sounds like you're kind of referring, because in the end, who makes these decisions? It's the council who agrees to make these, these decisions to settle. So, I, I, as I see this, you're that's kind that's, of... Shadow that's, not, that's not correct. That's not correct. The council does not make those decisions. They're usually made by either the joint insurance fund or depending on the level of, of the lawsuit and the amount to be paid out by the municipal excess liability carrier. And, and the same thing happens with the Board of Education, but in the end, it's the board who has to sanction it. We have to I'm say it. To wrap up, Mike. You're saying that the, no, the council has no true. final say in this. I'm saying the council does not, and if they do oppose any settlement, all right, then the township is on the hook for whatever that settlement may be. Mm -hmm. All right, well, all right, that's news to me. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mary Higgins, 148 Brighton Avenue. Uh, this is in regard to the uh, monies received for the November 10th 5K veterans race. Um, I don't know why I had to offer this information. I think, you know, in building pride for Belleville, at the time you had the race, or at least during that week, it should, should have been put on the Belleville uh, website, along with the name of donors, you know, because, you know, it was the first time we ever had a 5K run for the veterans. That was great. And uh, don't tell me you didn't know how much money was coming in, because the deposit dates on this go back to October 17th. All right, I'm just wondering why you had all these great photos of you and, you know, the people entering the race, but you didn't put down the name of the donors, which would have been great. You know, give them some recognition for donating this money. Donors are actually on the mile markers. 
Now, um, it shows here $6,142 was collected. Indeed, two council meetings ago, Mayor Melham, you did say you were hoping for a $1,000 scholarship for a high school student somehow related to a veteran. We have it on videotape, so don't deny it again. I would, Thank I you. I would look forward to hearing um, The veterans, from what I heard from two, or two veterans groups in Belleville, were promised, more or less, depending on how much money was cost, not $250, but $1,000 for each of the four groups in Belleville, which would have come up to $4,000, which makes sense. You have $6,000, each veterans group gets $1,000 and $1,000 for a high school student, which comes up to $5,000, all right? Uh, there doesn't seem to be any accountability for this. As far as paying the uh, police, the firemen, overtime, I believe there's a budget for that under recreation where it shouldn't have come out of this $6,000, right? Um, I'd also like to know how the rest of this money specifically was uh, dispersed. You don't have to tell me because I'm going to alter it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Motion, motion to close public comment. Second. Motion made. Second. Third. Cold roll. Councilmember Cosarelli? Yes. Companion? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Gentori? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Mayor Yes. Mayor Melville? Yes.
the township attorney and a maximum of three private citizens that could include professionals who have, have experience in the subject matter of the department semicolon be a further aside that the committee shall be appointed by, by uh, the mayor with council consent and uh, be a further resolved that the committee shall have the authority to interview all employees of the department review all policies and procedures of the subject department and make a re make recommendations to the townships or managers regarding changes to be made to the policies and procedures of the departments semicolon and be a further resolve that the committee shall serve without compensation. Just for clarification, shall be up to seven or shall be seven? Shall be seven. Um, should be shall be up to seven. Up to because you know what? That's you fine because uh, I did put yeah. up, up to three. Right? Up, up to, up to yeah. maximum of yeah. three. Yeah. So if you don't shall have three, you just have the shall be up to. You could just have three. Yeah. And that could be that could be modified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you repeat that? Yes. The whole <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion. So move. Second. Motion moved. Say clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cazarelli. Yes. Zipenia? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natori? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Schumulberg? Yes. Mayor Nelman? Yes. Your business? I just have one quick thing. We, we passed a resolution for Alex Crevelo for his 100th birthday. He turned 100 on January 3rd. Plus. But he ended up. He ended up in intensive care on uh, Christmas Eve, and, but he's come through it. So I would just ask for your prayers for him. Did he get back to the nursing home? Hey, it's tough, tough generation. God bless you guys. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.